So, one of the jobs we are going to do is how to calculate electric field. One is obviously going to say that given a charge distribution, I am just going to do this E at R is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 integration dv rho r prime over r minus r prime r minus r prime cubed here. Is this how I am always going to calculate it? Suppose I ask you a different question. Suppose I go to a region of space here, where I do not know about this charge, but I know field at these points. Let me make it with a different color. Suppose I know field at this point. So, what I will say is field given at a boundary. I do not know about the charge distribution, but I do know field about a boundary. Can I calculate field out here in the rest of the space? Let us look at an example. So, I do not specify the charge, how much charge a spherical body carries. But what I give you is, I hide that spherical body, I give you that on this surface the field is all the same on this spherical surface and its magnitude is given by some constant. Can I calculate the field in the rest of the space? In this case it is very easy because you are going to take the center of the center of the red sphere, you are going to say that E at the surface is obviously 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 because it is all spherical some charge inside divided by r square that is the magnitude and therefore, E farther out is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over r square which I can write as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q over r square times r square over r square I have multiplied and divided by capital R square which I am going to say E r times r square over r square. So, here I could argue because of the nature of the field because it is all spherically symmetric about a certain point. So, I could sense that this is due to a point charge, but what about if I am given the same surface, but field is you know has arbitrary direction arbitrary magnitude on the surface, what would I do then? then obviously, what I need to do is take the field out here and using some sort of a differential equation find out what it is at next point, what it is at next point and then keep integrating. So, starting from a boundary one can find field everywhere else if differentials of the field are known. All right. Now, I, I already said why do we want to do that is that not necessarily every time I will be knowing what the charge is somewhere. Right. I may be given a boundary and where I know the field. How do I build it up from here? So, if I know the differentials, I can do that, right. In other words, what I am saying is does E satisfy a differential equation that can be solved to find an electric find the field starting from a boundary. Where it is known. Right, is that point clear? 
So, what, what we are doing is we are trying to find a differential equation. So, that if I know field in a certain on a certain boundary in a certain region, I can build it up from there. Now, let us see how many differentials are there. E has three components because it is a vector quantity. We have E x in x direction is y component and E z and these are all functions of x, y and z. These are all functions of x, y and z, x, y and z. So, if I am going from point to point, if I am going from this point to this point, this point, this point, right? All three components E x changes as I change x, but keep y and z fixed. That means, I am taking a partial derivative with respect to x. E x also changes if I change y or E x also changes if I change z and so do all the other components. Right. So, if I am at this point, let us say this is x, this is y, this is z. If I go from here in the x z plane, the E x component may change as I move here. If I go in the y direction, E x component may again change. So, that is described by these three uh, differentials, partial derivatives. Similarly, y component will change with all three coordinates and so will the z component. So, in principle I need all these three nine differentials three for each component in order to calculate feel at some other point starting from its value from a given point. So, nine components and I should be listing all of them, but we are fortunate there is a theorem and I am going to say it without proving it there is a theorem called Helmholtz theorem. And what it states is given a boundary, suppose I know the perpendicular component of a field, any vector field at the boundary. So, perpendicular component of the field is known. Then, and I am going to define and explain those quantities later, if we know the divergence and I will explain its meaning in a minute, which is the combination of the derivatives in this form if the divergence that is sum of the x component derivative with respect to x plus the y component derivative with respect to y and z component derivative with respect to z if we know the divergence and another quantity called curl if we know these two quantities all right let me let me write its components for example the x component of curl would be partial ez by partial y minus partial ey by partial z y component will be partial z of x minus partial e z by partial x and the z component is going to be partial E y with respect to x minus partial E x with respect to y. If I know this quantity the curl and if I know the divergence 
I can calculate field everywhere. So, let us this is this is Helmholtz theorem and I, if I know the perpendicular component on the boundary, then I need to know only the curl and the divergence. Let us understand the meaning of these and that is what the rest of the lecture is going to be about. Today, I am going to focus on divergence. of a vector field. You have heard the word divergent. Divergent means, oh, we say views are diverging. Oh, there is diverging uh, light rays coming. Right? So, what basically it means is, particularly because you may have seen it in your 12th grade book, if light rays are going away from each other, we say light rays are diverging. If people have Differing views we say they have divergent views, but for electric field we are not going to be interested in this, what we are interested is at this diverging mathematical quantity. Light rays are diverging. I could very well replace light rays by a vector field and say these are the lines representing vectors of this field we are considering. Okay. But we want to get a view of what uh, a feeling for what this divergence means and define it in, in a very, very precise manner. When we say something is diverging, an example to define it would be a fluid flow, which I talked about earlier. Mm, so, let us say this water or a fluid is flowing and all over the place it has a different current at different points and looks like light rays diverging, this, this velocity is also diverging. Can we understand what this divergence means? Can I give it a definite meaning? So, let us see if I take a volume, a small volume here, if, if whatever that fluid is coming in and whatever is leaving is equal. So, suppose fluid coming in is equal to fluid going out. In that case, I would say it is not really diverging, whatever comes in goes out. right? On the other hand, if fluid going out is greater than fluid coming in, I will say is divergent. The, the fluid flow, the velocities of the currents are divergent, because they, they take away much more than they are bringing in or on the other hand, if fluid going out is less than fluid coming in, I will say is convergent. I will say it is convergent, because that is like negative divergence. Let us see if it makes sense. Let us see light rays from a lens which I say are diverging right? and if I take small volume here. In 
that case whatever light comes in right is also going out it may be may not be divergent but on the other hand if i take a source of light a point source of light and light is going out from here all around if i take a small volume around it and see the light going out of this volume all over the light is going out right so this is really divergent on the other hand if i take a point here where all the light is coming in then i'll say this is convergent and it's converging to this point is diverging from this point here at this point there is really no convergence or divergence there could be as we just discussed divergence at this point because everything is coming out of here so this this kind of gives you a feel for what divergent behavior is divergent behavior is going to be when something everything is going out right or if there is a net outflow or if there is a net inflow this negative divergence or something going in.